I usually say that we got sick and and he teases me he goes you didn't get sick I got sick and I'm like but we're a couple he's he's my partner we're celebrating 25 years of marriage this next week and it's I wouldn't want it with anybody else so it's we <laughs> Oh, I'm way over here. The wind caught me. Oh, you got one! Are you kidding me? <laughs> it, it's hard to say that I'd even be here now if it wasn't for her. She was the one that forced the initial diagnosis in 2013. So back in 2013, he was diagnosed with stage 2A melanoma. He had a mole on his left shoulder that he had had for his whole life. And I noticed that it had gotten larger, so we went and had it tested and they came back with stage 2A. They excised the area and he was good to go. Um, he had been cancer free for four years and then started having some issues. And in January of 2017, I took him to urgent care because I thought he had pneumonia. And so they did an X-ray and found a lesion. And here we are now, four years later, Still fighting, winning, everything seems stable. But with his melanoma, chemotherapy has not shown as much benefit, but immunotherapy has dramatically changed. So here at St. Afonso's, we have over 150 clinical trials for our cancer patients. We lead the Treasure Valley area in clinical trials, and our goal is to do the trial here, not to have people have to travel. And so we try to focus on expanding our clinical trial program and continue to offer multiple of trials, variety of trials for our patients locally. And that's where we brought Heather into the picture and introduced them to a clinical trial that combined immunotherapy with an additional injection that boosted up his immune system to try to get that full activity. By bringing clinical trials here, part of the value that St. Alphonsus brings isn't just the patients that participate in clinical trials. I think it improves the treatment of all patients that receive treatment here at St. Alphonsus through the physicians and staff's exposure to the new treatments that are coming down the pipeline. So you had any, so your, your scans look great from the cancer standpoint. Everything is stable across the board. The liver lesion is stable, the bone lesions are stable, the pulmonary nodules are stable. Everything looks good. And that's where this, these treatments do. One of the drugs revved up his immune system and the other one carried it along onwards. And he's done very well with those treatments. There's, there's definitely hope. He's the person that inspired me to go down the career path that I'm currently going to school for. Uh, I'm going to school to become a nurse and focus on oncology, so. Words can't even begin to describe how thankful I am to still have him around. Um, I wouldn't be who I am or where I am without him. He's taught me everything from doing basic maintenance on cars to just being a, a decent human being. Yep, she works from home now, so every morning I run to Starbucks and get her Starbucks. He's such a good husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go out fishing, we go hunting yep. together quite a bit. I take more vacation time now than I used to. Yep. It's like I, I make sure that I make time for family because he's here now. We don't know what the future holds with him. I pray to God we still have him for another 20, 30 years. What's your hashtag that you always put on your on your posts? Oh, I'm a fighter, not a survivor. Yeah, he says that quite a bit. We've cried many times in this room together. We've rejoiced many times. We had a great experience here because for me, oncology wasn't about just seeing patients, about building that relationship. And so we become part of the family. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I, I think it's time we flip the script. You know, everybody looks at it that way, that they're a survivor. No, you fought this. You, you fought this all the way through and you're still here. You're, you're not a survivor, you're a fighter. <laughs>